Okay, what we'd like to talk about today is Seedstar XP. Seedstar XP uh, works in conjunction with Seedstar 2, which came out in 2009. Seedstar XP is available right now in 2011 model planners. And it's going to kind of focus in on this bottom part of the monitor here. And it's really just adding some enhancements, some nice things that we haven't offered in the past. And uh, But again, it's going to have the look and feel of Seedstar 2, uh, but it's going to have some additional features, and we'll go over those uh, one by one. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about is the new pneumatic downforce for 2011 model planters. Um, on previous model planters, uh, we've had a pump with a switch that you had to turn the switch on and then look at a gauge and wait till it got to where you wanted it and then you know shut the pump off or open the valve to reduce the air pressure. Now we're going to do it right on the monitor. Uh, not only do we have, uh, have it done on the monitor, but we've added a tank now, we've added a heavier duty pump. Um, and uh, we've got a valve block on that tank with some solenoids, so the reaction time should be much faster to change to uh, change your air pressure. So the way to do that, we've got some things right here. Right now our target is 25 and our actual is 29. So if I wanted to change my target, I would simply press the target button and I can go ahead and just touch it again. And let's say I wanted to go to 40 pounds. So I would type in 40, hit the enter button, and hit the enter button again. And then the system will go ahead and start uh, to increase the downforce. As you can see, it, op it allowed a little bit of air in the system. And because we're working with such a small amount of air, um, it's going to be kind of erratic. But if you as you get more air pressure in there, it's going to be a little bit more stable. So it put air in the system, and now it's uh, fine-tuning it uh, to where it needs to be. So there's 41 pounds, so it's, uh, it's dialed in there pretty close. But again, pretty simple to change. It's much faster than the old way. And again, just hit your target. Uh, put in what your target poundage is and then the system will adjust it from there. Okay, the little buttons down here in the bottom bottom corner here. Uh, right now this first button is seeds per acre. Uh, we're all pretty familiar with that and much like in our Seed Star 2 monitor up here we've got our bar graph telling us our you know our on row performance and we've got our target seeds uh, per acre and then our actual seeds per acre in a, in a, in a numer numerical format. So if I want to look at that, I simply just press my seeds per acre button. And then also over here on this side, you can see I've got my minimum, uh, I've got my maximum, and then it's got a row scan as it'll just scan through the row. So you've got all of those functions over here on the right-hand side, and you've still got your bar graph uh, up on top, just much like what we had in Seedstar 2. The next button on our uh, for Seedstar XP, what we've got is this button right here. And what this button is, is this really telling us our singulation? Are we getting doubles or are we getting skips? It doesn't really say much about spacing. It's just telling us if we're getting, you know, if you have certain rows that are pulling a double or a skip. Uh, up here on the bar graph, uh, we've got our disc showing that we've got a double. And we've got our disc showing that we've got a skip. So if the bar is above the line, that row is probably putting down doubles. If it's below the line, it's probably putting down a skip. Now that is in comparison to what your target population is. So if your target population is 34,000, um, it's going to look at each of individual row and determine is it higher or lower than that and then tell you, okay, we're planning more than what we should be planning or less than what we should be planning. Now also over here in conjunction with that, we have our average singulation in a percent. So you've got 98%, 102%, depending on what you're doing. The skips, percent of skips, and which row is the highest, so it might say row one has you know 2% skips, but this is an average. Same way with our multiples or our doubles, it's gonna tell us the, the average over the whole planner, and it's also gonna give us the row that has the highest percentage of, of doubles or multiples, and it's gonna tell us what percentage that is. So that's our singulation button, and uh, it again, you've got your bar graph up here for a visual reference, and you've also got a numerical um, uh, display down below. The next button on Seedstar XP is, is the one right here that has the two little arrows between the plants and this is our seed spacing. So we'll hit that and what we're looking at actually is our coefficient of variation. And coefficient of variation is a statistical term and it involves your standard deviation in comparison to what your average spacing is. Now your average spacing or your target spacing should be based on what your population is. So if you have 34,000 seeds, you do a little bit of math and that tells you exactly what your spacing per plant in a perfect world should be. What this is telling you, the coefficient of variation, 
it's telling you what your average spacing is in comparison to what your average population is or what your perfect spacing should be. So again, we've got the bar graph up here and the higher that bar graph, the further that coefficient of variation is from what perfect spacing should be. Now, the one thing you need to know also down here is in your, in your numerical uh, reference, you've got your average coefficient of variation and then you got skips and multiples and it's telling you by row and which rows, um, which rows are basically the worst. Now, again, looking at this number, it's, it's in a percent, so, or in a decimal, and that, what that's telling you is, okay, it's a 0.3, or it's a 0.5, or it's a 0.7, or a 0.2. What you need to know is that 0.2 is better spacing than a 0.5. Um, and again, you know, the numbers, it's, again, it's a statistical number given in a decimal format, and just know that if it's a 0.2, that's better spacing than 0.5. The next button, what we have is we have our uh, we have our load um, on our rows, and right now again we're in the shop, so uh, we really don't have any load on our rows because we don't have the planter all the way down on the concrete. So again, we're showing that we don't have any load actually on our row unit, and that's also given uh, right here uh, in a numerical format as well as our as our visual bar graph up here. Now you'll notice only five rows are lit up. And that's because there's only five load sensors across the planter. There's one on row three, one row seven, row 13, row 18, row 22. Now what that's doing is, is that's telling you how much load you actually have on the gauge wheel itself. So I've got the opener in the ground and I've got this much load on the gauge wheel. There's a little sensor on each row unit telling you how much uh, actual load or weight is pushing down on the gauge wheel. Now down on the bottom, I have what we call margin. Now what margin is, um, it looks at all five of those sensors and it does some math and runs through some formulas and gives you kind of an average down force load on your gauge wheels. And what margin is, is that's the amount of load or down force that's in excess of what you really need to get the openers in the ground. So for example, if we're running in a field that's been had a field cultivator run through it, um, you know, our margin probably is not going to need to be quite as much because you've got relatively good conditions or you know pretty smooth field and it might be something like 20 or 30 pounds and that just means I have 20 or 30 extra pounds over and above what it takes to make the openers penetrate. Now if I'm in a no-till situation or something like that where I may need to have a little bit more a little bit rougher ground I may want to have a little bit more margin just as kind of a safety cushion so to speak so that I don't get the row unit bounce and uh, so I make sure that the row unit stays in the ground and I get the proper depth. So again, I've got the average margin and then I've got the, high, the low row and the high row uh, based on what the, the sensors are reading. The next button is right here. This is our ride and our, my bar graph is telling us what, um, that we're at 100% and it says percent okay over here. And then I can also look down at the uh, numerical reference. So my minimum row is row three, it's at 100%. My max is 22 at 100%, and it's got a scan on those five rows. Again, it's the same five rows that have the downforce sensors. There's an accelerometer on each one of those rows, giving us what our ride dynamics are. And again, you've got your minimum, your maximum, and your scan. And then we've got, you know, kind of our average, so to speak, down here. But again, these bar graphs all the way to the top means 100% good ride. If they start to come down, that means we're sacrificing some ride. And we may need to either slow down, uh, increase our downforce, or look at, for whatever reason, if we've got rough fields or something like that that's causing our ride problems. The next button that we have uh, on our Seedstar XP is this button right here. And this button is actually our, you know, our row if I want to look at a particular row and I want to look about everything on it. So right now I'm looking at row one, you know, and I'm looking at the population, the singulation, the multiples, the skips, the, the spacing coefficient of variance, my average spacing. And now remember row three, row three, five, seven, and so on have our sensor. So we won't have a ride quality or downforce uh, measurement for this. But this is kind of like we had the old, you know, you could pick a row and you could look about everything on it. And uh, you could just watch that one particular row. If you had a row that was maybe... I don't know, causing you some problems or seemed like it had some issues or something, you could flip to this page and just watch that one row and uh, that way you could look for, for maybe some issues that it might be causing. The last button down here as part of Seedstar XP is what I call our toggle button. 
And what it does is every time I hit it, it goes to the next function. So I went from my snapshot page over to my population page. I hit it again. Now I've gone to my I've gone to my seed singulation page. I hit it again. Now I'm on coefficient of variation, so on and so forth. So this is just my toggle page, and it will keep toggling through all of these different pages uh, as I press that button, and it'll skip to the next one with one touch. Another button we've got down here as part of Seedstar XP is we've got our sort of what I call our our total planner performance. So I press this button, and it brings up. It's a pretty busy screen. But it kind of gives us a snapshot of the entire planner. Again, it gives us our average population. It's got our, it's scanning our rows for population. It's telling me about my downforce and my margin. It's giving me my average coefficient of variation. Is we've got our singulation part, we've got our ride, and we can also adjust our downforce right here all on this one page. So this is kind of what I call the snapshot page. Um, and it just gives us an overall view of the planner at any given point in time. 